bet you all thought I was only going to do that one video and disappear again. It happens a lot for me, right? I'll come, I'll do one, maybe two, and disappear. Well, that's not going to happen. Good morning, everyone. It's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. And just like I said, we're going to try to make that flight exactly at the same altitude, exactly going to the same waypoints, and we're going to be in Microsoft Flight Sim. I don't want to get down into a comparison. I've been in love with Microsoft Flight Sim. I've been in love with Flight Sim before it was Microsoft Flight Sim since the day I got my first computer. And that, of course, was the Amiga 500. And the first game I bought for that, I bought it with the device, was Flight Sim, which I think was by Brutes Artwork and Associates back then. I think so, at least. I have to look at history, and I don't want to do that right now. I just want to talk about my feelings of the of Microsoft Flight Sim. This is absolutely the newest version. It is update 10. I downloaded it and I ran it today. It's a 50 minute flight. I'm going to try to cut out a lot of the bogus stuff. Of course, not here in the beginning because startup is an important part of the flights that I make and the taxing over to the runway because I want everyone to see the difference in the ground textures and the detail and the handling and everything. Now, I have been able to make a determination on who should buy which sim. If you're really, really, really into the way that aircraft really fly, and there's such a small difference these days. It used to be that Microsoft Flight Simulator had great systems integration, great systems simulation but X-Plane always had a great flight model. They're getting closer and closer, if not on par with systems simulations, but it's always been that X-Plane has had a much better, much better flight model, and Ground it's a lot closer Alpha now, Sierra, a lot closer. Sierra, Alpha, so what I'd like to, to show off today is Sierra, what Alpha I like request. about the sim. I'm not gonna repeat. talk about what I don't like because it, it's Ground not much, Alpha right? Sierra, I don't dislike Sierra, anything Alpha, from either like sim. I think that in X-Plane with add-ons from sim companies Alpha like Sierra, Orbix, Sierra, with uh, doing some free add-ons, like throwing in some scenery from Orthophoto, which is a process you have to go through, and great add-ons like X-Camera, I think that X-Plane has its merits. Um, flight Sim, I think out of the box, for the casual flight simmer, there's nothing better. Fly low, fly slow, fly in the heavies that they have. It's great. But there's such a difference in the number of aircraft available for them because of websites like xplane.org. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of aircraft available for Xplane 11, and many of those are going to be moved over to Xplane 12. Now, when I say hundreds and hundreds, I'm not talking about just the ones that you could purchase. I'm also talking about the ones that are made and released for free in the forums. And many of those are incredible. Not to mention the Zebo, right? An airliner that flies pretty much as close to realistic as possible is available for X-Plane. And I think that's great. And now with the new A330, I wonder what Zebo is going to do. Anyway, right off the bat, it's... I mean, I could see Orion over there, the moon. I'm not saying I can't see that inside of X-Plane, but what I am saying is that it's just the visual candy, the eye candy that makes Flight Sim so appealing to me. It makes me want to keep coming back and flying over and over and over again. Even though I get more of a linear feel of flying, um, I do feel that the flight models are so improved over the much older versions of Flight Sim that exist. Asoba's done a great job, and Microsoft with providing all of the terrain data, the scenery data, I, I mean, that's what makes this game really shine. And I'm calling it a game because I could play this on my Steam Deck. It's not perfect, but it's cool, all right? So the fact I could play this on my Steam Deck makes me love it just a little bit more. Now. X-Plane, I could play on my Max. Now, I need to play it on my M1 Pro 14-inch Mac because my iMac doesn't really have the power to push this because it's an M1 normal. But I see where Apple's going in the future 
with the introduction of faster graphic cards in the current M2 lineup. And I'm feeling that as time goes on, that huge lead that there is in graphic cards on the PC side is going to start to be whittled away. Not that there'll be things that are on par uh, between the two companies, but it will be well beyond acceptable on the Mac side. It will be more like console. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about both sims right now. Now I know that there's more packages out for flight sim as time goes on. You'll see more and more add-ons. I just don't know if you're going to see as many aircraft, especially those highly detailed $100 aircraft like PMDG made. I don't know if you're going to see them. I hope you do. But I Sierra, think because of the Sierra, client Alpha, base that purchases Microsoft Flight Sim, which is not Alpha, saying anything. Sierra, I'm part Sierra, of that Alpha, because Alpha, there's Sierra, times Alpha, I just Alpha, want a sim that I could jump in and, fl and fly. I think you're not in a position where you're going to spend $100 on a plane Sierra, most of the time Alpha. in Flight Sim. And $25, $30 for the visual candy of a plane is more likely. Right? I have many aircraft that I bought that have been in the 20 to $30 range. And then I spent another 20 to $30 on the reality expansion packs. I love the Carinado look and feel of aircraft. And I love sim coders when they come around and make the reality expansion packs for it. So it's one of the things that keeps me loving the X-Plane product. So we're going to take off over here and we're going to see how things go. All right, there we go, 55. Let's start doing our rotate. And that's one of the things. I don't feel that same feeling when I lift the aircraft off the ground, but it's so much better than before. And it's close enough to reality where if I hadn't flown for real in a while, I wouldn't know the difference at all. I mean, there wouldn't be. I do feel that there's a little bit less rudder needed than in real life where on X-Plane I feel like there's a little bit more. So somewhere between the two aircraft, is 172s, somewhere between the two of them, there's a much more realistic flight. And that, of course, is when I update the stock Cessna 172 on the X-Plane side with the Simcoders Reality Expansion Pack. Then I feel like it flies exactly the same. Or you spend a lot more money and you download something like the ultra high fidelity aircraft that come from companies like Airfoil Labs. And I'll tell you, their, their Cessna 172, the older one, I haven't gotten the newer one yet. It's about as close to real as you're going to get in uh, simulation. I really like it. All right. So a little wobbling, a little warbling, and we are off and up and I'm going to push us forward just a little bit. Now, while scenery is perfect, I feel that lighting is just a little bit different in both of them. Neither one of them is perfect, but I think, in, in my opinion, at this particular point in time, I think X-Plane really does better with lighting. But this is still a beautiful scene, and I really love what you get to see in both sims. And this, out the window, if I closed my eyes and opened them, real fast and put myself in real life in the same situation is about as close to realistic in the way things look as you can get. Even the clouds on the horizon, just like I said in X-Plane, I think both of them nail that perfectly. Absolutely wonderful. Now, I do, I, I am so tuned to using the G1000 that came out for X-Plane that I have no idea how to use the one in here most of the time. I I find that the one that is in the X-Plane works a lot more, uh, it works more like the ones in the Cessna 172s that I have used in the past. So beautiful. I, I just have to look at this and just tell you that this is the reason for flying Flight Sim. It is just utterly beautiful, especially the scenery. And I know YouTube is going to destroy the rendering here. Speaking of rendering, there's a difference between the two product, right? 
And I know that there is a beta version of DirectX 12 that is um, implemented inside of Xplane. I haven't used it in update 10 yet, but I did use it in the last update. And I, I just, DirectX 11 is great, right? It's wonderful. But we all know the enhancements that came to DirectX 12. Vulkan is being used over on the X-Plane side or metal on the Mac and I just feel like lighting and textures and stuff just look a little bit better. That's not detracting at all from the fact that X-Plane is by far better visually than X-Plane is. So Microsoft Flight Sim is by far better visually than X-Plane. It, it's... I'm talking about on the outside. Aircraft-wise, I think it's a toss-up because the lighting on the x side probably just makes it look a little bit better. And that's something that I know the people at Asobo will work on. I know that they're working on a lot more than just that right now, but they will work on it. Such a beautiful day, right? Let's try to push this forward because we want to have some of those gorgeous scenes that you get to see in this game, and I want to show them off because that's what makes you want to be here. It's another ooh-ah moment. I mean, I'm just snapping shots here. Because, again, I think YouTube is going to make this a little bit darker, but I need to do it in the low light because I'm trying to see how that lighting looks going from day to night. And it's just amazing. I, th I think that they are doing a great job here. I think that the sim is flying beautifully. I love the little bit of turbulence I'm getting. I'm using real weather for the first time inside of flight sim i don't know how that's working right now it seems to have that same um lack of stability in the air there's a little bit of updrafts i can tell i could tell that because as birds are flying they're just not flapping their wings and they're flying up outside i was outside watching a couple of things before i decided to do the uh, voiceover i i I really like it. I, I'm not liking the fisheye view from the drone camera. I'm going to have to change that. I don't want to look like I have a... I don't want to look like I have a GoPro all the time because I want to get better visuals, so I do have to fix that. There's a lot of things I haven't done on both sims yet, and it's because I am going to gravitate towards one for my videos, and it's most likely going to be X-Plane 12 because I'm much more familiar with it. It doesn't mean there'll be no videos from Microsoft Flight Sim. There will be. It's just, you'll probably see more from X-Plane because I'm so used to that sim, and I literally have about 40 aircraft for it, and I don't have 40 aircraft for Flight Sim. So I'm not going to spend the aircraft on Flight Sim until I start making a little bit of money from my videos again, and I don't want to make any money from my videos again until I can prove to you all that I'm back to stay and that I regain your confidence and trust that I am back. I think the next flight I fly is going to be an IFR flight, and I'm going to do it in places that I've never flown before. So I'm going to do an IFR flight first with the X-Plane, and then I'm going to do it with Microsoft Flight Sim and see how that works. And we're going to do it in... Uh, hopefully I can set the weather on Flight Sim like I can in... Uh, x-plane but if i can't i'm just gonna have to look around the globe and see which airport has conditions similar to what i want wow okay just amazing let's move forward a little bit because i could google here forever a little bit lighter getting that sun in the cockpit and I've flown so many times with the sun coming over my shoulder and hitting my dashboard or my, my instrument panel so brightly that I could barely see below all the scratches on the dials what they were saying and I would have to dip the wing to block the sun just to be able to see what altitude I was at um much different now that I could download an app for my Apple Watch and know that, right? <laughs> it's pretty cool. But still, that was a little bit of an issue in the past. And there's absolutely no glare being uh, simulated on these screens when you know it would be there. And that is something that happens in X-Plane a lot. So I'm not going to 
fault the game for it. I, I absolutely love that they're not doing it so I could see the displays, and that's pretty cool. I love the synthetic vision that's modeled here. It's not in any of the aircraft that I fly, but it's really nice to have it. I think that the experience of flying IFR is most likely going to be a little bit better when using X-Plane, but I have Garmin Pilot, which is going to be attached to the side of my monitor, um, and that's on my iPad Pro, and that has synthetic vision on it. All right, so let me not show you all the controls over here. This is what I'm using a Warthog. I don't want people to get, like, jealous. And I don't even have that. I have the F-18 one, so this doesn't even read the F-18. Well, it's time for more eye candy because this, yeah, I've flown this flight many times, and yeah, <laughs> okay. With, without the J.J. Abrams lens flare, that's about what you see. Without the fish eye look. Oh, my, oh, my Lord. Um, lighting I thought wasn't so great, but it's better than I was saying. It's actually doing a great job here. I know that there's probably a way to get rid of the lens flares. I, I hope there is anyway. But holy moly, that is such a beautiful shot, right? Yeah, about as realistic as you're going to get in any sim right now. So nice. As I'm picking up closer to the airport, you can see that we've just cro crossed into the Class C airspace. So we're in Charlie airspace. And I have live data on, and I've tuned to the actual airport over there, and there's a ton of aircraft over there right now, and I wonder if it's a setting I have in my graphic settings to reduce the number of aircraft in the area, but they sound like they have a huge amount of aircraft going in and out of this airport right now and there's nobody but one person asking for clearance to leave right now and that's kind of weird to me when i use like add-ons to do that on x-plane it, it makes things feel a little bit more congested so i have to see what's going on with the settings there there's also a little bit of an issue with the autopilot that always happens to me and it's happened many times in flight sim where Suddenly engine performance just drop for no reason and you stall and if you've walked away because sometimes you have to go to the bathroom when you're on a three hour flight, you'll come back and you'll be dead. So I'm sitting over here and I'm looking at my iPad trying to take some notes for today's flight and all of a sudden I start hearing the stall horn and I turn around and look at it. My engine performance has dropped down to like 2000 RPM. It's still trying to maintain the altitude and the speed and it started to it started to, you know, it, it just started to crash. So what I did um, immediately was to pull back on the throttle, push back forward on the throttle, engine performance came back up. We lost maybe a total of 300 feet and it came back up. I don't have that here right now because I still think it's probably something that I'm misunderstanding in the game. Um, but it doesn't happen in X-Plane. And I even have the... Uh, the realistic uh, versions of the G1000 and the 750 that I purchased from another company and it doesn't happen at all. So I think it's called XP Realistic. Anyway, no, it's not. I forget what it's called. Maybe it is. I have no idea, but there's, there's realistic versions of these Garmin units that you can get that you actually have to get a license from Garmin to get. So here we are. Right, we're coming in close. We're just about ready to enter the airport zone. I made a mistake. I believe the open runway, which this doesn't actually connect to the airport to know the open runway where X-Plane usually does. It knows exactly what runway is being used. I don't know what the difference is there. And runway two is the active runway. That's where I should be landing. And the game should be telling me that runway two is active instead it's going to let me land on the runway that I pick when I set up the flight, which is runway 20. Big different, right? Yeah, opposite sides of the comp, right? Chassis so tower Alpha I'm going to get a left Sierra downwind. Okay, so we're going to try to enter the pattern on a 45, land. and I'm possibly Next going to mess Sierra that up a little Sierra bit here. I'm also going to put up the AC ATC and just reduce it a little bit because in one of the flights that I made that did not get recorded because I, um, I just updated my AMD drivers and forgot to reset where I record to, 
I found that as soon as I turned onto the downwind leg, the co-pilot, which I use the co-pilot for radios all the time right now because it's a little bit difficult to try to manipulate everything that you can when you don't have every button set up. And the co-pilot stopped answering the radio call and it canceled my ATC and I landed and got a violation. So that one, thank God it didn't get recorded because you would have been seeing that, but at least you're hearing it. So we're flying in almost um, into runway 33, which would have been a much better choice where, with where the wind is coming from right now. Instead, we're going to turn right over here and enter that downwind leg for runway 20. And not bad. That's the best I could say. This over here, just what I'm seeing, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's amazing. I can't say enough for how good this sim looked. And the realism of the flight model may not be perfect, but it's close enough for people that just want to fly a little bit more realistically but are not doing studies they're not really learning how to fly it's close enough i would say that for most of you except for those of you that want to have a large number of aircraft in your library for most of you flight sim is probably okay it's probably amazing it's probably the product for you to get and I have to give it like an A at least an A for that but if you're more into study if you're more into tuning your schools for your, your skills for instrument flying and shooting approaches and other items like that I think in most situations X-Plane might be better and with companies like Orbeck that support them and many, many, many other companies that support them with realistic scenery, you know, satellite level scenery packages. I, w I would say X-Plane may become a lot of your favorite sim to fly. For me, I'm gonna go back and forth because I really like the visuals here. I like seeing the realistic depiction of the world below us. When I go fly over my house, I could see my house in uh, Flight Sim. It's pretty cool. I like it. And as they upgrade their rendering engine from 11 to 12, who knows, maybe we'll see even better graphic, right? I I'm just surprised with how many high quality aircraft are on X-Plane and not on Flight Sim after two years. I would have expected a lot more to be moved over. All right. Again, I could do this on my Steam Deck, which is why I like this game too. Doesn't look as good, but it does play well. Here we go. Turning on to final. I'm gonna shoot this approach and I'm gonna totally botch it. I'm telling you right now, I turned a little bit too soon and I started playing a little bit too much with the rudder, just trying to see if it worked as well just a little bit too soon right if I waited like another four or five seconds I would have had a square approach or a square turn at least I have the buttons on my joystick set up right for flaps so we're coming in a little bit high I'm gonna land a little bit long they're going to try to send us over to GA, which is over to our left. I just go to the maintenance hangars over to our right just to end this a little bit faster. And I don't know how to use the replay feature on this right now, and I will learn that. Look at that. I'm using the synthetic vision just to get an idea of am I where I'm supposed to be, and I'm not. I think my approach was a lot better on X-Plane. I think my landing is about the same on both of them too flat at least this one doesn't botch and goes left and right oh it did see I'm not perfect but I got on the center line in the end right so that's it I mean this is the comparison of, of, of my two favorite sims I don't think that there's a clear winner I think the winner is the one that you like to fly 
I personally am going to stick to X-Plane for most of it again because of the large number of plugins and aircraft I have. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to come back here and occasionally fly in flight sim, especially as I start to grow my community again and start to do some fun flights with you all because the multiplayer you know, aspect of flight sim is pretty much kick butt. Well, that's about it, right? That's the end of it. And uh, I think that you're going to get a gist of just how committed I am to rebuilding my channel over the next few weeks as you start seeing videos coming out every few days and hopefully moving to every other day in the future. I really can't do every day right now because of the responsibilities of the position I have with the company I work for. But I definitely have time to do at least three and sometimes five videos a week. So hopefully you're as excited about me being able to create content as I am. So if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Keep the comments coming in. I really appreciate them. They help me know what you like, what you don't like, and what you want to see. And remember to subscribe because subscribing is how you give more visibility to the channel and get to see the things that you want to see. And if you do subscribe, click that bell-shaped notification icon. You know, folks, I'm really happy to be back. I really like the comments I got on the last video. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I think we're going to turn this thing around and uh, say goodbye. With that said, you all be safe out there. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.